Today I'm going to show you how I use all my 13 different credit cards to maximize the rewards that I earn for my every purchase. This video is sort of an extension of the video that I made several months back about all the 10 credit cards that I use as an international student where I talked about what cards that I had but I didn't really explain how I actually use those cards in real world terms. So what I want to focus on today is the role each of these cards play in my credit card strategy. Every card that I have here is put into one of these three categories of cards which are everyday cards, sock drawer cards and churning cards. I'll explain further what each of these categories means as I talk about the cards that are within that specific category. First off is the everyday category of cards which as the name suggests are the cards that I use every day. That includes the Chase Freedom Flex, Chase Freedom Unlimited, Chase Sapphire Reserve and the Bank of America Cash Rewards card. These four credit cards are collectively responsible for 95% of all of my purchases every single year. I use the Chase Freedom Flex at drugstores which gives me 3% back and also at grocery stores which gives me 5% back on up to $12,000 in purchases during my first card member year. And since I'm pairing this card with my Chase Sapphire Reserve, that allows me to redeem the points earned from the Freedom Flex card at 1.5 cents per point through the Chase Travel Portal. That essentially makes the 3% and 5% earned by this card become 4.5% and 7.5% back respectively. Speaking of the Chase Sapphire Reserve, all of my dining, takeout and travel related purchases are put on this card that nets me 3x ultimate reward points per dollar spent. For all of my online shopping needs, I use the Bank of America Cash Rewards credit card that gives me 3% cash back on up to $2,500 each quarter, which is more than enough. And for any other purchase that doesn't fall into a specific category that is covered by one of my other cards, like paying for my utility bills, I put it on my Chase Freedom Unlimited, which earns 1.5% back. But just like the Freedom Flex card, since I'm pairing this with the Chase Sapphire Reserve, that 1.5% becomes 2.25% back when I redeem it on the Chase Travel Portal. This ensures that for every purchase that I make, I'm earning a value of at least 2.25% or more. So as you can see, my everyday setup here is heavily skewed towards chase cards that earn ultimate reward points, and there are two reasons why. Number one, it's incredibly easy for me to redeem my chase ultimate reward points directly through the chase travel portal, where my points are valued at 1.5 cents per point, versus having to do some homework and coordination by transferring my points to one of Chase's many travel partners where I can get values of 2 cents per point or even higher. The second and more important bit is that it's just easier for me to earn Chase Ultimate Reward Points because the earning rates of these Chase cards closely match my spending lifestyle more than the equivalent American Express trifecta that earns Amex Membership Reward Points. So yeah, that is why I have built my core credit card strategy around earning Chase Ultimate Reward Points. I've had this set up for a few years now and it has worked really well for me. What are your thoughts on Chase Ultimate Reward Points versus MX Membership Reward Points? Do you prefer one over the other? Let me know down in the comments section below. Moving on to the next category of cards, which are my sock drawer cards that includes the Discover, Chase Freedom, Apple Card, City Double Cash, and Amazon Rewards Credit Card. So the cards in this category are cards that I only use once every few months, like the Discover and Chase Freedom, Depending on the quarterly categories, I'll use the card to get 5% cash back. But honestly, for the Chase Freedom, I don't really know what to do with this card because it shares the same rotating categories with the Chase Freedom Flex. So yeah, I haven't really found a good use for this card yet. And for the Discover card in particular, I use it every month to reload $2 to my Amazon balance that get cancelled by Discover when the statement closes because of their small balance waiver. That essentially nets me $24 every year for free. For the Apple Card, I honestly don't have a solid use case for this card yet. It really only makes sense for me to use it when I'm buying stuff from Apple or the App Store where I can get 3% cash back. Some other merchants like Uber and Walgreens will also give me 3% cash back, but they're already covered by one of my everyday cards, so it doesn't make sense for me to use the Apple Card here. As for the City Double Cash card, at face value, it does have a higher cashback earning rate at 2% when compared to my Chase Freedom Unlimited, which only earns 1.5% back. But because I'm pairing it with my Sapphire Reserve, I value that 1.5% at 2.25%, 
making it a better value compared to the double cash's 2% cashback. Now with the Amazon Rewards credit card, it used to be one of my everyday cards as it earned 5% cashback at Whole Foods in addition to 5% cashback on all Amazon purchases. But since cancelling my Amazon Prime subscription, that 5% has gone down to just 3% cashback. That is still a pretty good rate, but for groceries, my Freedom Flex earns 5% back, which is a far better value. These days, I still use the Amazon Rewards card when I'm shopping at Amazon. It's just that I no longer get that sweet 5% cashback since I don't have an active Amazon Prime subscription. And as I mentioned in previous videos, not having an Amazon Prime subscription has prevented me from spending unnecessary money on random stuff, which is a very good thing as I can actually save more money from not buying stuff on Amazon impulsively than trying to accumulate 5% cashback. The last category of cards are the aforementioned churning cards, which in case you don't know what that term means, churning is this term that is commonly used within the credit card community that is the act of applying for credit cards just for the sign-up bonus, which is exactly what the cards in this category are for. That includes the Amex Delta SkyMouse Platinum, Bank of America Premium Rewards, Bank of America MLP, and Bank of America Susan G. Komen card. I've not used any of these cards for any purchases after I fulfilled the minimum spend requirement for the sign-up bonus, but I do use it to reload $1 to my Amazon balance every six months or so, so that the bank doesn't close my credit card account. So yeah, that is how I use all of my 13 different credit cards. If you are interested in hearing about how I manage all of these cards from a logistical point of view, get subscribed. I have an upcoming video describing how I keep track of all of my credit cards so that I'm always on top of things. That is all that I wanted to share with you today. If you're looking for more credit card videos from me, check out my finance playlist here for more videos just like this. And I hope to see you very soon in the next video.